facilitate that process. Right. Does Which, that happen to, tomorrow night, though? No, 27. Does that happen tomorrow night? No. They talk about it so that we can be prepared can to hand it. Yes. Yeah. And I'm still terribly confused, so as I'll need some help with that. That's a lie. So uh, we also, the musical, uh, if Zoe were here, I'd like to say, because I'm sure Zoe's probably in Oklahoma, but Oklahoma will be um, shown at the high school from um, on March 14th through the 16th, and it's going to be an amazing production, and we hope many, many people will come. Tickets are on sale at lunch, and you can also order them at arhsmusicals at gmail.com. Um, so please, everyone, come out and see the wonderful show. We also have Monte Carlo Night, which is scheduled for March 16th at Valentine Hall at Amherst College. And this is um, the fundraiser to support our high school athletics. So we are hoping people will come out. Tickets are $25, and they can be purchased from the high school athletics or at Cushman Market, Hastings, Hampshire Athletic Clubs, or Jones Group Realtors. Um, you can also go on the Hurricane Boosters um, site as well. Um, we also have, for parents and guardians of ELL students, they're invited to a attend a session on March 20th at the high school library uh, at 7 o'clock, which we'll talk about topics like high school um, specific course registration, graduation requirements, and such, and translations will be provided. So we hope that families will come and take advantage of that great session. Um, also, there's so much to say tonight, so I'm going to try just to say a few more, and then I'll stop talking at people. But we also have an 18-hour active bystander workshop training that's going to be happening at the high school, middle school, on March 25th through the 27th. And we have Quabbin Mediation um, of Athol is conducting a 30-hour, I mean, a training for 30 of our students and 12 adults, which will be kind of a train-the-trainer model. So then our staff and faculty will be able to uh, work in the high school setting to interrupt and intervene in um, tough situations that unfortunately our, our kids and adults do at, um, encounter in the world around bullying. So it's really exciting. It's going to be infused into our advisory program for next year at the high school. Um, we have numbers of students who are doing amazing things. Um, do people want me to read everything? I'm looking at my committee who's saying no, we can read. So there's wonderful things, please, to read about our, our students. Also, at the high school, there's, uh, I should say, what is today? The 12th. So we missed the March 7th was the rising, the orientation for rising 7th graders. It was a wild success. Um, and then there's other amazing things that have been happening and are happening coming up at the elementary level. So please, people, take a look at this. It's, it's chock full of great events and ways to recognize our students who are um, unbelievably impressive in their accomplishments. And this is online and, um, again, plenty for the audience as well. So I'm going to stop there because that's just a lot of updates tonight. Um, Mr. Jackson. Thank you. So is it Sasha Jakob? So Sasha was named Concert Master of the Massachusetts All-State Festival Orchestra, an honor that places him at the top of wow. all high school violin players in the Commonwealth. So we, I think we can give an applause for that one. That's amazing. Thank you, Mark. Um, and there are so many more. But thank you. That's really impressive. <coughs> So please, people, take a look. It's a great, um, great updates tonight. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. There is a lot there. Thank There's you very much. There's a lot. There's a lot going on right now. Um, moving on to the next item on the agenda, I'll turn the meeting over to um, Catherine uh, yeah. for the Amherst School Budget. Sure. Thank you. Um, so you can I start? Sure. Then? So I wanted to talk, if I could just, just make a brief statement, and I will make it brief, about the budget process related to Amherst and the regional schools, and then I'll be asking you tonight to vote the bottom line budget for the Amherst Public Schools and for the regional schools. So um, in terms of our budget development, we really have walked thoughtfully through the budget process for Amherst and for our regional schools, and we really have to hold... Um, two priorities. We have to be fiscally responsible at the same time as um, creating a budget that supports the mission of our schools. And at times those two things that we're holding are off, you know, competing with each other. So we walked through the process, I believe this year, in a, in a really positive way that we were able to um, achieve both priorities. So the guidelines from the town of Amherst was a 2% increase to our budget and we have um, met those guidelines. And we created a regional budget, which um, 
was within the range that our four towns or four communities could meet the assessments. So that is um, success by the financial measure. Uh, also, the budget itself meets the short-term goals and holds a long-term vision for our schools so that we can become much more financially sustainable over time, which in this new uh, fiscal climate is critically important for um, tomorrow as well as four or five years from now. The challenge for us is really to be able to live within that financial reality while we create uh, a budget that fully supports the district and school plans that we put in front of the committee and the community. So um, in terms of meeting those educational commitments, we have created a budget um, that allows our system to grow and develop to meet the student um, demographics, the changing needs that we have, um, also to maintain the excellent um, educational programs that serve the whole child. We've been able to do both. We've created a budget which is in line with our commitments to the academic core, to the visual arts, to music, health, wellness, social and emotional development of our children, and furthermore provides the resources to support our commitment to equity and to our diverse learners. So we're fortunate, again, to live in a community that um, our <coughs> students sitting right here represent that our community values are our educational system. And we have cultural and educational institutions that really support us in our work. So in addition to what our budget provides for us, we also have really exciting things that you've been hearing about um, each time we meet. And we'll continue to rely on our partners to be able to bring um, enrichment and hands-on um, project-based learning to, to our school systems. We are, as people have heard, in the middle of creating permaculture gardens. We are um, have strings and vocal coaches from Amherst College and UMass who are coming into our elementary schools and our secondary schools. We have volunteers who are working in our art classrooms at um, elementary through middle school level. Our Span the Spanish department in Amherst College is going to come and help with Steps to Success. They are offering their time and energies and some financial resources. We have athletic departments who are offering to come and work with us around intramurals after school. And um, the five college students who are helping us with our MSAN conference. And um, for every innovative idea, AAF, Amherst Education Foundation, is listening to those um, innovations and um, have, are in the process of supporting a number of those grants again for this year. So we thank the community not only for the appropriated budget, but also for the commitment to step up and help out in ways that are not maybe represented in the budgets, but they are tangible. So the list goes on and on. Um, so we're really fortunate that we have such a strong school system that really provides um, kind of fertile ground for innovation. People are really creative and um, willing to put in place in, um, new thoughts and new ideas about what could be beneficial to our kids, and they're willing to take risks. Um, so uh, we thank everyone for the learning of our students, but also the work that people are providing or the, the resources that higher ed's providing for the learning um, that is necessary for our adults as well. So the budget that's before you, um, I'm confident that it provides for our continued growth. It provides for us to be able to build on our current programming and expand. And it stays within our fiscal realities, um, which is never an easy feat. So after the budget is voted tonight, um, our work is not done. We're very much in the process of hearing from staff of you know whether they're returning from leaves or exiting on leaves or their interests. And um, we have to go through a signing of staff across buildings. We have to make some model revisions around delivery of services, and we have to create schedules for all of our schools. So our work over the next few months um, is, is very busy, even after this budget is voted. So um, I would ask you know, for Amherst that we ask the committee to vote the bottom line budget, which um, the total appropriated amount for the Amherst schools. Okay. So Thank I turn you. to you with that. Thank you. Maria, um, and I'm just going to make a very brief statement and, um, and then call for a motion. But I first wanted to thank the Amherst Committee for all your hard work in this budget process. This is one of um, our most important roles as school committee members. And I think all of you have worked really hard at, um, at, in your role. Um, <coughs> several months ago, we established our priorities. 
We asked the superintendent to address the needs of students in our district who have been historically underserved. While at the same time, we asked her to move the schools forward to make sure that every child in the district will have access to the best possible curriculum and instructional practice. We asked her to maintain class sizes. Um, and finally, we asked her to build a budget that looks to the future in, the, in terms of sustainability uh, over the next several years, while at the same time bringing down our high per pupil costs. So the superintendent and her administrative team created that budget. Um, and the school committee asked a lot of questions. We had a lot of questions. We gave the superintendent a lot of feedback. And so now it's time for us to vote the bottom line budget. So if I could, I will entertain a motion that's in your um, agenda packet. <coughs> Rick? I move to adopt a budget of $21,989,199 for fiscal year 2014 for the Amherst Public Schools. Second. Second. All those in favor? Is, um, right. Um, I apologize. Is there any discussion? Just check it. Thank you. No. I appreciate that. I, I, okay. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Rick. Just one thing I want to mention about process. Some parents came and brought something to my attention about the first budget meeting in particular. They thought that the board mm -hmm. didn't ask many questions. Mm -hmm. And I explained to them how that was the first night we were seeing the ads and cuts. So we heard a lot of input from parents. Mm -hmm. We saw the ads and cuts for the first time. And at least speaking for myself, I was like, okay, I've seen these, I've heard that. Now I'm going to go find out more right. about it and at mm -hmm. the next meeting have more to say. Right. I think the audience doesn't always understand what's going mm -hmm. on. And so I think it's important for us to recognize what they're seeing and not just what we're right. seeing. I, I, I um, <coughs> appreciate you bringing up that point, Rick, because the other point is not only do we work that way in terms of having several meetings where we talk about it, but I know that there's also a lot of um, emailing back and mm -hmm. forth with right. the superintendent and the administrative Meetings. team, and we get a lot of our answers that way, and we ask a lot of questions and give feedback. So that is helpful for, for the community to know that. Thank you. And thank you for the vote. I'm, I, we are missing one member, but um, we have the man and some of the members who are here. OK. Yeah. Thank you, Catherine. You're welcome. Um, Next item on the agenda, yeah, you should have in front of you, it was not in your packet, but you should have a one sheet. I, I didn't make a sheet for everyone. Oh, um, okay. I can speak to it. Want to speak yeah, to it? Yeah. Sure. Okay, we're going to have, um, if you look on the agenda, um, there's the Mass School Building Association Statement of Interest Approval, and there are, um, there is a motion that we're going to ask for you to consider, vote on for Amherst and a, a, a similar one but different wording for the region but right. I'll defer to Maria who can explain both. Sure I can just speak to it a little bit so um, each <coughs> year we come in front of the committee if we are going to submit a statement of interest to the MSBA around um, improvements for our schools. This is a process we went through for the uh, Windows project at the middle school and also each year we go f we have historically the past few years anyway asked for um, or submitted our statement of interest regarding renovations to Wildwood and Fort River School. Um, so this year we are again submitting a statement of interest for the renovations of Wildwood and Fort River schools to bring them up to a more contemporary um, configuration for teaching our children. Um, to, for those of you who are not aware of, which I think everyone is, but the open air classrooms are less than conducive at times to the current instructional needs um, and we'd like to be able to really do some major renovations on both of those buildings. If Ron were here he would speak more eloquently about all of the technical details but that's the gist of it. This is just submitting a statement of interest. If they come back to us and say yes we would be funding um, some renovations then the process begins where we talk about the specifics of what that would look like what that would mean but the committee does need to endorse my just submitting that paper. Um, the second um, issue is submitting an SOI for the repairs on the boilers. Ron made sure I was saying there's more than one. Boilers at the high school. 
This is reflected in our capital plan that you voted to happen in FY, I want to say 14. I think it's FY 14. And FY 14, so if we were to receive these funds, which is a, a green energy repair, it would offset the capital. So it would help us to not have to expend all of those funds that have been allocated in the capital plan. So I'm asking for the region to vote for us to submit a statement of interest to repair the boilers at the high school, which is reflected in the capital plan. And then I'm asking for a um, statement of interest for Wildwood and Fort River. And I think Kip has the motions, which I don't I have. have motions motions for, I am. So that's, yeah. does that make sense to people? That's Michael. A point, just yeah. a question. In terms of the sequencing, since we went from the Amherst budget to this, how does it impact the regional buzz budget, or does it? The, um, the, if the money, the funds are already allocated within the, the, um, the capital. capital. Yeah, so, so this would just help us to reduce the, okay. yeah. Does I that make a, sense? Trevor. I got a question along those lines. Um, the capital budget for the region is what you're describing. Yes. So as a point of order, we're going to have a vote first from, from the Amherst board about that and separately. Yes. Vote from the yes. Board. Yes. <coughs> So I know it kind of melded okay. those two together. Sorry about right. that. So um, this is a very long motion, but apparently I have to read the whole thing. And actually, we need to technically vote separately for each building. Yes. But I'm, Debbie assures me that it's okay if I read this once, and we will, in the motion, understand that we are voting exactly the same thing for both Wildwood and Fort River. That, okay. And she'll, she'll recognize that in the minutes. So, resolved, having convened in an open meeting on March 12, 2013, the School Committee of Amherst, in accordance with its charter, bylaws, and ordinances, has voted to authorize the superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority the statement of interest form dated 2013 for the Wildwood Elementary School and the Fort River School, located at 71 Strong Street, and you'll put in the address. Thank you. Southeast Street. Southeast Street, which describes and explains the following deficiencies and the priority category for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in the future. One, replacement or renovation of a building which is structurally unsound or otherwise in a condition seriously jeopardizing the health and safety of school children where no alternative exists. Two, elimination of existing severe overcrowding. They've misnumbered these, but I'm assuming this is three, not they're, four. They're actually numbered according to Okay, thank you. Four, prevention of severe overcrowding expected to result from increased enrollments. Five, replacement, renovation, or modernization of school facility systems such as roofs, windows, boilers, heating, and ventilation systems to increase energy conservation and decrease energy-related costs in a school facility. Six, short-term enrollment growth. Seven, replacement of or addition to obsolete buildings in order to provide for a full range of programs consistent with state and approved local requirements. And hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting this statement of interest form, the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application, the awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority. or or commits the city school district to filing an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Second. Thank you. Second. All those in favor? Any questions? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I've asked uh, Debbie to um, send via um, electronically copies of both of these so that you'll have them just for your own records. Um, I'll try to do this in my best FM radio voice so that you're not bored with this one. Um, resolved having convened in an open meeting on March 12, 2013, the Regional School Committee of Amherst, Leverett, Pelham, and Shutesbury, in accordance with its charter, bylaws, and ordinances, has voted to authorize the superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority the statement of interest form dated 2013 for the Amherst Regional High School located at 21 Mattoon Street, which describes and explains the following deficiencies and the priority categories for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in the future. 
Number five, replacement, renovation, or modernization of school facility systems such as roofs, windows, boilers, heating, and ventilation systems to increase energy conservation and decrease energy-related costs in a school facility. And hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting this statement of interest form, the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application, the awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority, or commits the city, town, regional school district to filing an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. <laughs> May I have a motion? That is the I'm second. sorry, second rather. Excuse me, second. <laughs> Multiple seconds. I'll, I'll take Anne Marie's. Any discussion? Keep your day job. Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> Trevor. In the motion, um, it mentions all of those, but what specifically do we. Boiler. It's the boilers. We're not worried about our roof or our windows. <laughs> it's this specifically for our boilers. Right. Boilers. That, that all of those have to be included. I understand. In other words, we could ask for any of those, but we just need that right. as well. Right. Any other comments or questions? If we're ready to vote, all those in favor, raise your hand, please. And it carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask if um, Catherine wants to adjourn the Amherst meeting committee at this point. Is that appropriate? Uh, sure. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? Thank I you. move to adjourn the Amherst meeting. Second? Second. All those in favor? Great. Thank you. Okay, so the region now needs to consider the regional budget, so I'll defer mm -hmm. to Maria on this one. So the, the only um, statement, again, kind of uh, spoke to both budgets <coughs> leading into it, but the only point of clarification and kind of, I don't know if it's a non-clarification, it's kind of hanging out there that I'm asking you to trust, is ex um, related to uh, the, the PE reduction. So that was raised... Um, as a concern, and what I wanted to say to the committee is we're still working to figure out how to incorporate more physical activity and health instruction into the school, and it's going to take us a few months to work this out. Um, so what we're doing right now is we're consulting with athletic departments of higher ed, and we're asking them to work with us around um, expanding athletic opportunities after school. We're working with many of our staff members who have some really innovative ideas around um, before and after school, as well as during the day, um, evidence-based strategies around um, increasing movement and physical activities into the culture of the school, meaning in class, between class, um, and at lunchtime. Um, and, you know, kind of the trade-off that we're sitting with, and I'm going to tell you a funny thing about that other thing in just a second, but the trade-off is this, that if we move PE um, off of the rotation, where it was and leave it separate, it takes away the time for differentiation and intervention. If we move it onto the rotation with the same amount of time, it requires us to um, make reductions in things like drama or art. So at this point, we're feeling that for us to leave it as we planned on the rotation, which is a decrease in the phys ed time, but then to really be able to create more of a culture of the, the physical activities and to increase um, health is where we need to move at this moment, given our um, competing demands. So I'm asking that you trust that Mike, Malone, and Betsy are going to work on this over the next few months, and then we'll come back and kind of let the committee know where we're sitting. One really fun, I have to say it because it is fun, um, Marta, when she went to Arizona and um, for MSAN conference recently, the school that they were in had this robo voice that came over between each passing time and it said, it is time to move to your next class. And then they played music and kids literally danced to their next class. They had five minutes in between and they did this dancing. So I know that that sounds a little silly, but I think it would be exceptionally fun. Um, but, but these are some of the smaller things that you actually can do to get kids moving and there are ways to incorporate within the classroom and at recess time. Um, and Betsy's all about looking at this, as you can tell from her face in the audience. So, again, I'm going to ask that you um, vote the bottom line budget with that lack of clarification around that one point, because it will take us a while to be able to really figure this out as we're scheduling over the next few months. Um, but we do have the commitment to the health and wellness of our kids, so we're going to make this happen one way or another, or multiple ways. So I do ask that the bottom line budget for the regional schools um, be voted by the committee. May I have a motion? Uh, 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 Michael? 
Uh, I move to adopt the budget of $29,130,815 for fiscal year 2014 for the Amherst Poem Regional School District and to assess member towns according to the assessment method specified in the original agreement as follows, $14,158,830 for Amherst, $1,259,488 for Pelham, $1,398,899 for Leverett, and $1,483,380 for Shutesbury for a total of $18,300,597. Thank you. Is there a second? A second. Thank you, Trevor. <coughs> Any comments or discussion? Michael. Just a couple of comments. In terms of the, the PE, I, I do want to appreciate your, your thinking about it. And uh, Thank you. the two things, I think, you know, I appreciate the balance. Incorporating culture, I think, is actually really powerful. Mm -hmm. um, and I would nominate the school committee to pilot the <laughs> dancing hall. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be great. Um, and I think just in the bigger share. picture, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kip can, Kip can lead us. I sort of appreciate you and the administrative team because, you know, I said it at the first hearing. But part of why we're all dealing with this is just the lack of revenue, you know, mm -hmm. in the public stream and the, the challenges of charter and the challenges of not having tax revenue and that mm -hmm. this is really tough and it's been this way for 20, 30 years at this point. Um, so it's, you're doing an exceptional job and they're tough and not always desirable. I mean, no one likes cuts, um, so we have to push back, but I think it's not a good situation to work from. Thank you, we appreciate it. Anything else? With? Yeah, we're done. Any other comments or questions? Um, just very briefly, I, I, I won't bore you by repeating everything that Catherine said to the Amherst Committee, but I certainly want to duplicate those words for the region as well. But beyond that, just very, very quickly, um, during our discussions and also the parallel conversations uh, at the regionalization meetings, sustainability has been an, an often used word that has, I think, lost some of its meaning and some of its credibility to, that means anything to folks. Mm -hmm. um, so what I would prefer to say in regards to this budget is that I think it's a wake-up call on several levels um, for all four communities. Number one, um, the declining enrollment is problematic for all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, um, we've recognized, as Michael just did, the declining revenue stream. Uh, that's both um, structural and discretionary, if you ask me. Uh, but third and finally, and I think most importantly in terms of wake-up calls, I think despite the cuts, um, and, and maybe in fact because of them, um, there is also a long overdue recognition of the growing disparity of both cognitive and non-cognitive skills and abilities of our students as they come through the schoolhouse doors. And I think despite the cuts, um, what's rather remarkable here is that there's still a retention of structures, if not um, a, an elaboration of those structures, that address those needs that have been, um, in my personal opinion, not the committee's, but my personal opinion, have been uh, not given their full due over the years. So while there are cuts, I think if folks pay, uh, pay attention and do their homework and look carefully at what is underneath those cuts and what is still in existence, I think they'll still see a fairly, uh, a quite vibrant system at work. Mm -hmm. And uh, my hats are off to the administrative staff for being able to achieve that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, time for a vote. All those in favor of uh, approving the motion, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Abstentions? I'm catching up with where we were on the, the regional agenda. budget. I'm sorry, voting yeah, I, for? I, I vote for. Okay, so the vote is unanimous. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Now the next step for um, us. The next item on the agenda is um, school choice hearing. Yes. So I'm going to yes. turn it over to the superintendent okay. for the intro to this one. Okay, excellent. So this is the time, a point in the year where we really just have the conversation about um, remaining a school choice district or choosing not to be a school choice district, which means accepting students um, by choice. Um, and we recognize that the revenue that we have realized from school choice, which we will be applying for the um, to the regional budget for next year specifically, is I think $717,000, and for the Amherst is $145,000. So um, for the region, the, the conversation is, I can't remember Pelham's, 450 maybe. 
Um, just to include Pelham in the conversation. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Might even be more. Yeah. So this is the opportunity. This is not a night to vote, but this is just an opportunity to discuss um, becoming or, or staying or not staying a choice district. And then I would be asking the committee to vote. I'd be bringing a motion forward next meeting to vote. And my recommendation at this moment, which I cannot anticipate it changing, is that we do remain a choice district and we use choice as we have in the past. To, um, to fill seats, to round out classrooms, but not to, um, to an over-reliance. And as I mentioned to the committee um, a few meetings ago, some of our conversations from this point forward really are about sustainability, about looking at the declining enrollment, about looking at the use of choice, and for us to start to make some discussions, uh, decisions programmatically. Um, but at this moment, I do not anticipate coming in front of the committee to say, please, you know, let's not accept. Um, I consider we'll, we'll keep it uh, for a while and see how, how things go. But I guess the committee really needs to see if there's any additional questions about choice and how they, we've used choice in the past and going forward. Before we proceed, are you looking for questions? You're looking for comment? Anything I think at there, all? If there are questions or comments, okay. I think that's great to have now. And I could answer. Kathy's here, who's who um, has oversight of ch school choice. If there are specifics that I can't address, and then it's really next time we come together where we'll be sure. asking for a vote. Trap. So. Um, uh, I know I'm getting way up into the clouds. We can start at the basics. I know there's a lot of people that don't understand how choice is used, and I. You know, I'm on the school board and I mm -hmm. scratch the surface with understanding mm -hmm. choice is a tool in the ways it can be used. Mm -hmm. I am in agreement that we should continue to be of choice, but if it comes to my mind to articulate all of the reasons why, there's only a few that I can think of. Mm -hmm. And would like somebody to expound sure. some of the particulars. And, 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 and just to put a frame on this, I'm considering um, um, the value of choice and using choice as a tool in certain circumstances. Right. And my understanding has it that choice can, you know, help sustain a district or hurt a district. But I'm not sure exactly mm -hmm. the scenarios where it hurts and where it sure. helps. So I'm looking at regionalization, mm -hmm. the, these conversations we have in the community about regionalization. Yeah. And whether that would continue to be a benefit mm -hmm. or not. I'm not against choice. But sure. I want to be able to reasonably articulate the pros and cons. Sure. Um, I could jump in a little bit and we'll Please. see where we land and I can always um, add more next if it continues to be more questions around. Mm -hmm. um, but choice is a, it's a really difficult uh, philosophical discussion for some people because when you as a district or any district accept choice, you're taking revenue from another system. And in turn, when our students choice out to another district, revenue follows those students. So in some cases, the system that's been set up for choice and charter, uh, people can have um, philosophical um, opposition to based on that it's not terribly, um, I mean, it's probably overly simplistic, it's not neighborly to take funds from, from the town next door. So there's a philosophical discussion that's, that I think scratches the surface that some people sit with, which is difficult. For us, the primary use of choice is as a revenue stream. It, it does supplement and support our school system. We do not use it to where we're overly relying on it, where if we didn't have choice, we would not be able to run our schools, which is the, the, the concern. Would we have cuts? You bet. Um, however, if we were going to decrease, we are very cautious of how we use our choice funds because we use them as truly a reimbursement. So as students come in to empty seats, we don't do it to overextend our classes or to pay for teachers. It's about rounding out classes at a class size that are manageable. So we use it as a, an additional revenue stream in those situations. The, the problem can be when a school district does over rely and you're not using it as a reimbursement where you are getting them funds in this year that you're applying for the following year. Mm -hmm. Any change in that puts the district at risk financially. Um, so we're very cautious about how we use it, how much money we, we project over time that we're going to need either to decrease choice or increase choice and we make conscious decisions about that as a system. Some of the longer range conversations though that we are gonna have to have is when, when we look at our declining enrollment, what is the, the range of offerings in a programmatically that we're going to keep in place and what does that mean for choice? Does that mean we're going to rely on choice to 
further hold on to ranges of programming or are we going to constrict a bit so that we're not over relying that's our kind of tipping point we are not anywhere near that but those are our future conversations um, I think that um, a few communities do use it yearly when it comes in and I think that does put them at risk I think also some communities where you have the tipping point of the numbers of students that are community students versus choice students, then it becomes a risk because you are not, um, the amount of money that comes in is $5,000 per student plus if there are special education increments or services that you, you are receiving funds for, but the amount of money that goes out for say charter school is, is substantially greater and the $5,000 is not. Um, in our case, anywhere near our per pupil cost. So it is a supplement. It is not a way to float your budget. Um, I'm trying to think what else I would say. Other positives of school choice, though, is the kids who come to you really want to be here. And families are often highly invested in your school. So there are positives that people come in and they're really invested in being part of your school community, in addition to the revenue that comes um, to support our schools. So I don't know if that. Is that I kind of went all over the place. Yeah, but does that, that help? That kicks off the conversation. Okay, yeah, excellent. Helps. Yeah, a, a baseline. And, yeah, and much more to go. So if there's you know specific questions over time too that you come up with, you can you know feel free to send them to me, ask me, and I'll bring other people up too to answer who've had more experience with choice. Michael, so I think just uh, philosophically, Shutesbury has been not interested in choice and so we're not a choice district um, and so that's usually where I fall I think I probably would decide dif differently given you know tradition and culture here but that remains to be seen um, I think given that however in response to yours just to fill it out a little bit in terms of the beyond neighborliness I think one of the initial rationales was it's a way of spurring a district who is not performing as well as people think it should to do better um, and I remember several years ago when we were talking about regionalization of Franklin County and mm -hmm. people in Greenfield basically said once you start and it's a death spiral because what ends up happening is people choice out and you have less resources so there's no way you can really improve it's not like people are coming in with TA and resources to say mm -hmm. you know you've been identified as a, a choice out region let us help you improve so you can bring your kids back that doesn't happen so I think there is a real for some districts where they're in that reality mm -hmm. it actually is really detrimental to the district I don't think that's appropriate here but I think in terms right. of the the Western Mass or Pioneer Valley reality. There mm -hmm. are definitely winners and losers in that regard. And I think that's sort of the dilemma. And then I think just for our communities, you know, my read is that, you know, Leverage has sort of changed its stance recently and, mm -hmm. you know, Pelham has a li large percentage, as you know. So it plays out when you get dependent right. upon it. Um, but I think for our, for the region it's different. So I would, you yeah. know, I would evaluate it differently than I usually would. Thank you. Other comments or questions? I also just want to say with school choice, even if we voted to have school choice, that doesn't mean we actually have to open any slots in a given year. So mm -hmm. there can be flexibility in the system, but you could still say we don't want to use it in our budget this exactly. year. Okay. Thank you, Annie, because this, again, even if we vote to remain a choice district, it would be, we'd be, <coughs> you know, announcing that, but we would be looking at our enrollments once registration, pre-registration, registration happens so that we can really make sure that we have um, the spots and that we don't overfill. So thanks. Any other comments or questions? <clears throat> um, I'll try to be brief. Um, for as long as I've been on the school committee in Leverett and now on the region, this has been the most difficult decision for me to make because I am adamantly opposed to school choice. Mm -hmm. I think it's very, very poor public policy. Um, I think it isn't, it isn't even public policy. It's really corporate policy. It assumes that a market <coughs> should exist for educational, the delivery of educational services. And I don't think there should be winners and losers in public education. That should be the last thing that we would want to see happen. And I think choice, given the way the funding is structured, regardless of the benefits that may accrue to individual youngsters, uh, and I think they do. Mm -hmm. um, the fact of the matter is, in my opinion, it works somewhat like a lottery. And um, for that reason, there are winners and there are losers. Um, and I, I simply cannot, uh, regardless of however the funds are used, I simply cannot cast my vote 
for that situation. It just, it, it, I just find it, uh, it's just unacceptable to me. And in Leverett, it's a little bit more difficult than it is here because um, the money from choice in Leverett has become uh, not at all unlike an addictive drug, um, where at one point it was part of our discretionary kitty jar over here. Um, it has become, over the past four to five years with level funded budgets, it has become part of our structural budget. It's how we operate now. And um, that makes it even more difficult to vote against it. Um, nevertheless, um, I suppose it's sort of a case study for people in political science um, where your philosophy um, and values and uh, beliefs comes up against the practical matters of running an organization. And while um, I am more than aware of the difficulties of running this organization, I, I simply cannot, I, I, I cannot honestly continue to exist as a school committee member and cast my vote for school choice. I feel that strongly about it. And I've, I've told Maria this uh, on several occasions, um, and it's unapologetic. Um, I simply cannot vote for it and will not. Michael. Um, I had a question for Maria, but I wanted to appreciate what you said because yeah. that's often what I say. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure how I'm going to vote, but, yeah. you know, if in the you know click your heels reality, mm -hmm. you know there actually is some additional revenue, is it possible to sort of start thinking about that? Because I think the power of having an Amherst regional district, which is you know providing good services, mm -hmm. is financially intact is relative to others. You know to say to have as a model that we actually don't want to play in this game because there are winners and losers. Is that something that you know just looking down the road is something that would might be considered? Yeah, I mean, we're actually looking at that. Um, that will be part of our conversations over the next few months to see where we're going to land as a system. But there's a lot of moving pieces, as you know right now, yeah. about, you know, how, <laughs> as kidding. we all know right now. Because it really does depend on what our enrollment trends look like over time and um, the configuration of our, you know, governance structures. So we are actively having that conversation. And... Um, I understand fully the, the philosophical and the, the dilemma that people have with making this vote. Um, and I sit with the $717,000. So, uh, but yes, we are having the real conversation around the use of choice, and we will continue to do so. And some decisions coming up, you know, around regionalization, you know, will we'll lend to that conversation Thanks. in one way or another. You're welcome. Trip. <clears throat> in response to you, and I'm going to say this with all due respect to Maria, but the reason I'm asking Maria that is because I hold it in my pocket as that decision falls to us whether or not to be choice or not. That's mm -hmm. true. So with, re and yeah, this yeah. Is with respect to Maria's position, whoever the superintendent is has to play with whatever cards we deal with. <laughs> and if we say, you know, what are yes, the pros and the cons of choice, I'm especially thinking about if we, if um, 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 one of the, pros of regionalization that, that has been touted is mm -hmm. putting our financial house in order. And I'm questioning whether or not if our financial house is in order, are there other reasons that school choice is, is necessary? Mm -hmm. So um, to piggyback off of Kip's analogy of a drug, you take a drug that you're addicted to because you have to, but when you don't have to take it, now you start thinking to yourself, look, I don't have to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm thinking about what it is that makes us have to do school choice, and it's Cash money, y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if regionalization solves that cash money problem, then we could decide we don't want to play the game and, and stick to our morals and our, our, our holier than now selves. Yeah. I, I'm not talking about you, but I'm talking about me. <laughs> stick to yeah. our ideals. Yeah, I, and mm -hmm. I, I, I guess I just wanted to say I completely understand that, um, that philosophical stand, and I, and I don't disagree with it, but I also understand, and I, I guess I have my elementary school hat on, but one of our priorities has always been trying to maintain class size, and I do know that choice is um, one of the best ways that we're able to do that. Um, and so at the elementary level. Mm -hmm. At the regional level, um, probably does not have the same kind of impact. I, I know it doesn't have the same impact in terms of class size, um, but uh, you know, for that reason, uh, you know, it's it's clearly a double-edged sword. Yeah. But um, that's a good point. I didn't think to say that. One. You know. mm. Any other comments or questions? 
Not hearing any then. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, You're and welcome. we will vote on the 19th? Yes. Okay. Um, moving on to the next item on the agenda, the school calendar. Maria? Sure. So um, each year we uh, pull together, and Debbie actually pulls this together. So if we have specifics, I'm going to turn to Debbie. Um, uh, draft calendars to put in front of um, various groups, including the, the Amherst Pelham Education Association. So we have a, uh, by contract, we put in front of people a pre-Labor Day start and a post-Labor Day start. And we provide a draft to the school committee so that you have the opportunity to take a look at that and um, ask questions and provide feedback. And then um, the APEA is also in that process right now of taking a look at the contract and giving us feedback. And then I anticipate the next time we get together, I will make a formal recommendation of which calendar we would like to move forward with. And then I would be asking the committee to vote a school calendar for next school year. So this would be on the 19th as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. Comments or questions? Michael. <coughs> um, two, one just totally selfish. I think this is the first time in eight years on a school committee I've seen a post-Labor Day start. It, yes. And I do battle every year. We always put one out so there. So thank you. It's so You're nice welcome. to see you. Whether it gets approved or not, it's yeah. nice to see. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess following on the heels of that, the debate we always have in Shootsbury is that um, by June it's hot and kids don't want to be there, so you should start earlier, which I actually think doesn't make sense because it's just as hot and it's summer in August, so <laughs> it'd be nice to have you just talk about it because in my mind school starts in September, but I'm antiquated. Yeah, you know, I actually like, I actually like the That's okay. August start. I, I'm used to losing. Yeah, you know, I like that. It seems to work out in terms of the dates and the holidays um, um, more comfortably for students and for staff, and I think it also helps um, I don't know if this is pre or post, but I like this configuration because we get staff in during a period of time at the end of the summer and get them gearing up for so that really by September you're in full swing. For me, the heat factor, you hit it on both ends. So Thank you. You hit it on both ends. And I don't know if there's other, Debbie, she needs a microphone, sorry. Yes, you do, Debbie. She's done this for many, many years, so she can add to it in a way that. There, there are probably times that the post Labor Day start would work really well. Unfortunately, this year isn't one of them. <laughs> yeah. um, it would put us starting the first day of school on September 5th, which is Rosh Hashanah. Oh, that's so fine. that's really not an acceptable day to have the first day of school. Mm -hmm. um, we looked at some other ideas, but the idea of a post Labor Day um, calendar in order to meet our contractual obligations means that everyone has to start post Labor Day including teachers hmm. and in order to have the students in class for even a couple of days prior to Rosh Hashanah the teachers would still have to start pre Labor Day okay. so there's not July. a true post Labor Day start that really works well this year okay. thank you mm -hmm. uh, I was just gonna speak in favor of the August start because mm -hmm. the 27th of June seems really late to end school yes, it is. <laughs> just the way the calendar falls this year yeah I agree. There, if I could just please, I want to point out one thing just so there won't be any misunderstandings about it. Um, normally, the winter break starts on December 24th. Um, this year, we have it starting on the 23rd simply because the 23rd falls on a Monday. And we figured with the holiday break, we would have attendance of about 10% <laughs> if we building. had that Monday the 23rd. So that's why you see a full week there instead of the traditional 24th. And I would, uh, I'd like to speak in favor of the August start for a couple of reasons. Uh, first place, if you have two days, then four days, then five days, it's a very nice yeah. way to like break that. into mm -hmm. the, uh, the new year. You don't want to have four and then five. It's too much of a shock for at least for teachers, I can say that. At least for this teacher. <laughs> for children uh, as well. Yeah. They're, becoming, they're exhausted the first few days. Uh, the, other, the other concern I have, and I don't know, it sort of all comes out at the end, is that I know there's been a lot of research about students, uh, students who struggle academically, students at risk. There is, there is an issue in our country that we have uh, a summer vacation that's too long. Mm -hmm. There's an awful lot of loss uh, mm -hmm. academically, and I think 
uh, anything we can do, even if it's just two days, that can get that loss eroded uh, mm -hmm. is a good thing. Anyone else? Okay, if not, then we'll vote on the 19th. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, moving on to the next item um, on, in your packet, you have a, um, a sheet which identifies a gift from uh, Maury and Phyllis Eisenberg. Um, I would entertain a motion to accept that gift. Rob? I move to accept a gift uh, of a violin, a case, and a bow for the high school music program from Murray and Phyllis Eisenberg. Is there a second? Second. Second. Catherine, any discussion? All those in favor, I please raise discussion. your hand. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Trevor, I'm sorry. Will the um, violin be labeled for who gave him the gift? I don't think so. I don't, know. Probably I don't think we typically, case. I don't know. Will if we, we do that? Yeah, I don't know if we In other words, if there's a set of violins we already have. Is there a you know, some kind of special marker for the gifted violin? I doubt it. So whoever used it knows know. this came from the Eisenbergs? I, I mean, I, I just, yeah. I imagine that would be a, 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 a fitting gesture. I can check on that, yeah. but I have no idea. And I, and I, I somehow doubt it, but I could check. Right. It doesn't just become a random violin. Rob? I do know that my son's <laughs> cello came from the Pelham PGO. It's so stamped, yours stamped does. on it. That's, okay. what I'm <laughs> That's what I'm asking. If it would be stamped on there as a, as right. a gift from. But I will, I will check that for you. I'd be happy to let you know. I, I just don't. It's a nice. Yeah, it's great. Enough. It's a good idea, Trump. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. You'll just accept gifts and throw it yeah. in. Yeah, no, no, no. It should be it's a special violin. The kids will enjoy it. It should be a special violin. So we violin. thank them for this gift, yeah. and I will, I will check on it. Um, our noting it tonight will be lost in the minutes forever. <laughs> that will retain. It's a tape. good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Opposed? Carries unanimously. Thank you very, very much. Um, before we get to the subcommittee reports, well, as uh, before we get to the regionalization uh, planning board report, I just want to tell the, the board that um, you will be receiving from uh, the policy subcommittee a couple of policy recommendations at our next meeting. It's not as if we've been on vacation. We have been working, mm -hmm. but we just work. <coughs> Kind of slowly these days. Um, but anyway, you'll have a couple of um, proposals before you for the 19th to for your consideration. Um, I'm going to ask Michael to give us an update on um, what's been happening with the Regional School District Planning Board. But before he does, um, I, I would just like the public to know, uh, if you don't already, of uh, the incredible work that members of this subcommittee, of this committee rather, mm -hmm have uh, put in over the course of actually the last year plus now, mm -hmm. been more than a year, on getting us to um, the vote this past Saturday. Um, Michael, um, Trevor, and Catherine um, all serve on the Regional School District Planning Board. Then you. Um, four, I think it was four hours, four and a half hours on Saturday um, yeah. before we uh, finally uh, got to a vote. And I'm going to ask Michael to um, Give sure. us an update on that. Sure. Um, so as Kip was saying, well, some people were getting spring fever. Um, a bunch <laughs> of us were in this room for a very long time. Um, but we met this Saturday, March 9th, and importantly, we were on schedule. So this has been a complex mm -hmm. endeavor with lots of moving parts, and we're actually on time based on what we're planning. But Saturday concluded the fact-finding portion, so we spent a lot of time figuring out what we needed to know, then getting consultants to do the due diligence and getting the research. We had the forums last month in all the four towns where everyone got feedback from their residents. And then this was sort of the culmination of the fact finding. And <coughs> the questions on the table initial, initially were, well, the, the question was, do we want to continue planning as four towns going forward with, with some regional model or not? Um, and the initial two models up for consideration that we've discussed for a long time or either a four-town pre-K-6 model or a four-town pre-K-12 model. Um, and then at the last minute, there was a hybrid model, which is a little complex to explain, but it's a sort of a pre-K-12 with a carve-out for a town that didn't want to participate in that, um, i.e. Shootsbury. 
So I would just give kudos to Andy Steinberg, who um, is the chair of the committee, because he did a phenomenal job. And I think, especially given this body, um, the four towns and, and the 12 of us on it have worked exceptionally well. Um, the discussion was extremely respectful. Um, I think the level of collegiality was, was really, really high. Um, and everyone's trying to work together. I mean, I think this region sort of sets the tone of we've been doing it for 60 years, so it's, we know it's doable. How do we get through? Each town has a different set of issues and needs that it brings to the table for the elementary. Um, but we know that this works. And so that's sort of the combination. So the upstart of, or the, I don't know what the word is, but what ended up happening being voted was that Amherst, Pelham, and Leverett voted to, and well, Shootsbury voted for it. Um, mm -hmm. The 12 of us, it was unanimous, we voted for a three town pre K 6 region that included Amherst, Leverett, and Pelham. Um, and just to be clear, because I know this is confusing in my town, and I want to make sure for the audience, the vote was to continue planning. The vote was not to regionalize. Um, and I think just in the shorthand, mm -hmm. people get confused and they say, oh, okay, we're regionalizing now. And in fact, March 9th kicked off the next phase, which is building a regional agreement. Um, and that's really the negotiating of saying, how do we deal with governance? How do we deal with you know the possibility of changes in the s local schools? How do we deal with the financial assessments? All that detail that instructs this region has to get built for a new region. Um, so that's what the commitment was. And so the three towns agreed. Shootsbury, I can just say, um, the three of us support the idea, but it, based on the feedback from our forum, we were not hearing people who were affirmative. We heard people who were in opposition and people who were skeptical. And so at least for Saturday, it didn't seem like it made sense to go forward. Um, and I think that's, that, that's the big news. Catherine. I just want to also add um, that uh, there was a lot of conversation about um, pre-K-12 versus pre-K-6 during yes. this four-hour meeting. And there were many of us on the board who really wanted to see a pre-K-12 region. Um, but it became clear um, that in order to do that, we would have to have a, the Shootsbury, the town that was not going to involve itself in this process at this point, um, would have to vote to amend the current regional agreement in order for the uh, regional agreement to be changed to now incorporate uh, a pre-K-12 region. So realizing that that would be a very difficult thing, um, the feeling was, and it was a unanimous vote at the end, um, to at least move forward with a pre-K-6 region at this time between the three towns that were hopefully going to a town vote. Um, Thank you. I mean, I think, yeah. just to underscore two things that, that you said, one is that there were a lot of people who were in favor of a pre-K-12, um, and mm -hmm. I think it speaks to the trying to work together that mm -hmm. we got somewhere else, that we were trying to figure out something that worked. Um, and I know from the Shootsbury perspective, we did not want to undermine the going forward, and I mm -hmm. think that was the fear that because we would have to open up the regional agreement that has th creates this region in order to create a pre-K-12, it risked everything not happening. Because if we, all four towns have to vote in the affirmative to change that. And if right. we decided not to, because we wanted to retain the 712, nothing would happen. So that was important. Um, just details going forward. We've got a meeting, it's either on the 18th or the 20th. 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 It is the 20th, okay. Um, on the 20th, so very soon, mm -hmm. next week. Next week. Yeah, yes. next week. Um, and I think that'll kick off the, the next steps in terms of regional agreement development and communicating out. I think the other thing that's worth noting um, is up until Saturday, the, the board, the 12 of us, basically made an agreement throughout this year that because we were information gathering, we weren't going to take a stance um, on to regionalize or not regionalize, which model, whatever, that we're really sort of trying to take in information and learn. Mm -hmm. On Saturday, having voted, there is a model that's preferred. Um, and so it, it's going to change, that it's really going to be proactive <coughs> education, information, basically with the idea of we voted in support of this and you should know why, um, which is different from what it's been for the last year. Um, and so, and then subsequent to that, we're meeting on April 1st as well. So there's a lot of work to be done. The regional agreement has to be finished by June 30th, um, and that's earlier than originally planned, but it's because we got the DESE grant, which the funds have to be expended by the end of the fiscal year, and we did not get the CSC grant. Um, which would have allowed us to cross over into the next fiscal year. Um, so, I, you know, in talking to Andy Steinberg today, it's 
going to be a lot of hard work because this is the details, you know, got to, and it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's the intense stuff. I mean, last, the last year was hard, but this is a, a different hard. So that's it. Um, just a couple of things, Michael, if I may piggyback. Uh, number one, um, I think it um, is important to not underestimate the fact that we're shifting to an advocacy mode mm -hmm. from this time forward. Um, and so the kind of language and discussion that you'll hear, I think, is, is going to be much more pro, you know, K, pre-K through six, uh, because that's the mode that we're in. That's what we've come up with, and that's what we're going to go forward with. Um, I also want the, the, the date that we have, the deadline in June, is important for this body. Um, and I just want to give you a heads up that sooner rather than later, and I don't know precisely when, it may be as early as next uh, meeting, the 19th. It may not be until our first meeting in April. Uh, but um, I am going to ask Maria to put on the agenda um, the task of this committee this group voting to authorize the regional school district planning board to rewrite the regional agreement to uh, encompass the the concept that the board approved on Saturday so that is coming I don't know exactly when um, but obviously it's going to have to come soon to meet the deadline of, of, of June so please be aware that that's going to be coming your way and you're going to have to cast a, a vote up or down on on doing that um, because what we're doing on the Regional District Planning Board obviously has a direct bearing on the very existence of this board. So um, something that's okay, so quite important. Fine tune, just Michael, go ahead, please. Yep. So it does, it actually, it's a, sorry to correct you as chair, but right. um, it doesn't call into existence the presence of this board or the region. What it does is that we're all, the way the regional agreement, it spells out how we're appointed. So. In mm -hmm. Shrewsbury and Leverett, we're appointed by our committees. Same thing with Pelham, Amherst. You guys all just are on by virtue of being on the committee. But it defines the process whereby we all fill seats. Mm -hmm. um, and if there's a pre-K-6 region, there are not local school committees. So therefore, school committees cannot appoint us. So there's five ways that we can comply with state and federal law in terms of one person, one vote constitutionally. Um, and there's a couple of ways that we've been discussing. Um, that are more amenable than others and so it would be up to this body to decide what the preferred mm -hmm. um amendment was and then going through that process when you say this Thank body you. which body are you talking about i think it's up for the regional school committee to decide which one it prefers and then move it to the it's a town vote to amend right mm -hmm. but we would That's so the the, the the and what we have to get clarification on is the timing so mm -hmm. i what we just if i what we were discussed on saturday mm -hmm. was that if the pre-K-6 region got created, it would most likely be a town vote in November of 2013. It would be, it has to be submitted to the ESE for approval in December of 2013. Mm -hmm. And if it was approved, then there'd be an implementation period from January to June. And the new region would start in July 2014. At, on July 1st, 2014, when it starts, the other school committees stop existing, and that's the point at which we would be out of compliance. So it's unclear, I think, is mm -hmm. when we would have to change. But to Trevor's point, the the 712 Regional School Committee would have to embrace a methodology that was constitutionally acceptable and then put it on a warrant for the towns to approve at some point subsequent to be out of compliance. Right. Annie? That's clear now. Also, Trevor? I just wanted to... <coughs> say sometimes for us that, that have been living and breathing this stuff for a year, it sound like a lot of inside baseball. And so I just want to uh, boil down the okay. take home messages. The take home message for everybody at home listening and everybody you know that's been following this stuff is, now that we have got this information, four different uh, town uh, boards have come together and unanimously decided that the most benefits and the most feasible thing to do, the best thing to do is try to form a K through six region. Emphasis on the try to form because the work comes into hammering out the details. So it's still possible that details can't be hammered out and the whole thing falls apart and is not voted upon by the town. So take home point that you guys made, but I want to sift it oh, out from totally. all other stuff you said. That this is not set in stone yet, but this is what we have all agreed on would be the best case scenario, what we're recommending and what we're trying to figure out how to make work the best for all four towns. All right. Then the next thing, and, and you guys inside baseball explained it perfectly, and that is that right now we're all four separate elementary uh, uh, districts that 
assign a person to come and represent us at the regional level. That would fundamentally change if we made a new elementary district. So we just have to write new rules about who sits on this board. So. And you're saying three, you were saying four districts. There are three moving forward. There's correct? three moving forward, okay. but the fourth that isn't moving forward still has a representative on this regional board. Right. Seven through 12. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. So that Shootsbury as well, I won't even say that because okay. I say Shootsbury. Yeah. Shootsbury would also have to approve any amendment to the current okay. regional's, mm -hmm. uh, 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 regional agreement. Okay. Right now, all four towns have agreed that this is how we appoint somebody to here. Three people want, three towns want to change it. Shootsbury would also have to approve of such a that change. Can I ask, if, so if Shootsbury decides, you know, two months from now, you know what, maybe we'll do this. Is that a possibility or how does that? It's, it, it's legally a possibility. The question is practicality. So because this is a planning mm -hmm. mode, it's just a matter of jumping. We act, so just stepping back a bit, the, the Regional School District Planning Board, so the 12 people coming together, we voted last year as four committees to join one board. Mm -hmm. So all of us wear two hats. We wear members of our town committee and the board. So Shootsbury on Saturday decided not to withdraw, which was what people had sort of presented you would have to do if you didn't want to go forward. So we are fully still part of the 12-person board, mm -hmm. which is why we voted. And the idea was, at least amongst the three of us on the committee, in the short or medium term, uh, we're sort of convinced that Shootsbury is going to want to join a pre-K-6 region. And so we would like to be part of the conversation to whatever extent is you know acceptable to the other three towns to sort of go through this. We've been living and breathing it for a year, just being part of that conversation. So we, we, we haven't gone anywhere. We haven't left the table. We're just okay. saying we're not part of the, the solution in that regard. Um, but in terms of if we said, you know, hey, we changed our mind, we want to play with you guys, we can do that differently at different times. So between now and June 30th, it's having the conversations and making sure that the regional agreement is written with four towns as opposed to three. So that's a possibility. But after June 30th and before the November vote, I think it would be a matter of that's having to pay lawyers to rewrite the regional agreement the um, and making sure it was on the warrant in time. And then subsequent to that, so if, this, if the four, three towns voted um, and a region was approved by DESE, so there's now a region and we're sort of a separate district still, we would then, just like we did with this region, Shootsbury and Lover came in two years after the creation of this region. So we would come knocking at the door and say, would you vote to approve us? And right. there would be some voting process where our town would have to say we want to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think the, because it would be changing the regional agreement. And so the only thing I would say actually is that each process is defined by the regional agreement. So our current 712 regional agreement says if we want to amend the agreement amongst us, all four towns has to vote with the majority to change it. But in the pre-K-6 regional agreement, it could be whatever we decide. We could replicate that, mm -hmm. but it's, it is, there's no statute saying that you have to do it that way. Catherine Shrewsbury has a Catherine, I'm, I'm, Excuse me, Chuck. I, I, <laughs> Michael basically said it, sure. but I, I, I just think there was some confusion about the timing. Um, I mean, one of the things about, about um, pre-K-6 versus pre-K-12 is that all three towns, Leverett, Pelham, and Amherst, can vote to regionalize pre-K-6 and s subsequent to that, the regional uh, school committee can be amend can vote to amend, but, but it's, the, but Shootsbury will not be involved in voting whether or not the three of the other, the three remaining towns mm -hmm. can regionalize or not. Right. That was key. That yeah. was very yeah. key. That was the point. Right. So yeah. just. No, no, you sure? I'll start. Any other comments or questions? Maria? I just want to say one quick. I just want to say that the committee, first of all, just kind of echo what, what um, Kip had mentioned, that the committee's worked unbelievably hard and put in a ton of hours over the past, over a year now. And people coming, three representatives from each community coming together with the interests of their um, communities, but with children in the for forefront, and have waded through really hard discussions. And to be able to watch that committee do their work was really impressive. Um, and it's one of the most collaborative groups I've ever seen, quite honestly, and functional teams. Um, and Saturday was, it was a marathon of four hours, but people were in it, they were committed, they were considering all of our kids, our community's kids, and how best to move forward. So I just want to say thank you because it, was, it has not been easy. 
and it's not done yet, but um, just the people were so explicitly there for, for children is, was um, impressive. So I thank them and everyone. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Um, moving on then, we're, we're coming to, um, to closure here, well ahead of our <laughs> time clock. Um, I'm gonna ask Maria to give us an update on both the calendar, future items, uh, and again, let me repeat that at, at some point between now or the next meeting and the first meeting in April, uh, I'm going to ask, um, request that Maria put on the proposal. So that's in addition to whatever Maria shares with us at this point. Sure. So thank you. So for our next meeting, um, and I don't have my calendar in front of me, but our next meeting, Dr. Cohen will come with her team to talk about, oh, thank you. Uh, an update on teaching and learning, and I believe she'll be focusing um, very solidly on math and science uh, pre-K-12. Um, and that, I think, presentation and question and answer will be about an hour, so that is going to be the bulk of our meeting. We also will vote for um, choice, and we also will <coughs> vote a calendar. Um, let me think, where are we after that? Let's see. Oh, and then we have to move topics now. So we have to move some operational topics of information systems and maintenance and operation report. Um, so we will have to consider what the next team meeting would be, which I think is probably um, April 30th, I think is the next joint meeting. April 30th, I know the PBIS update is Oh, okay. That oh, that's night. great. That's right. PBIS and discipline, that, that update. And I have to, I should have said that already too. We've had... We had our whole team presenting today, this afternoon at the Mary Lyons um, conference on PBIS, and it was stellar. It was a model that could be taken on the road. Can I say that? Um, and I also understand um, Dave Sloven, Lieutenant O'Connor, um, Paul Lyons, and another colleague um, presented also at the Mary Lyons conference around school safety, um, risk assessments, safety assessments, um, and, and really impressive. So I just put that out there too but I, so all that to say is PBIS is coming up um, in April so the next meeting I have to play around with for a little bit but our immediate meeting will be Dr. Cohen and um, the two votes. Can I ask a question about um, the, we talked she's going to talk about math Dr. Cohen? Mm -hmm. um, will, will there be discussions about or question or explaining about the different pathways that math has in the high school because yes. I know that's a question that's come up here a lot and Yes. Just an explanation of how it works and students' choices. So. And where we are in our process because her work has really been to look at math pre-K-12, um, not only um, curriculum materials but pathways, sequence, um, you know, the whole package. Okay. So she'll be bringing us lots of detailed information and an update and then um, again in May for lots of decision making. So. Can I have one more question? Is there any, like, will we be able to see any of that before so we can read it, or is that something? Sure. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on her, but yeah. just to understand a little bit more about I that. Can, I can ask her what she'd be able to send in advance. It's not a report format, but right. it would be a PowerPoint presentation, and I know that she will be also having teachers um, and administrators come and present with her, so it's going to be pretty comprehensive. Okay. But I can ask okay. her to see what she can send in advance happily. I think she's, I know she's working on it because I saw the power, part of the PowerPoint today. So. It's just so much when, when they share it that it's night, there's so much and then you can do questions and, you know, sure. so I could ask the questions later again, but I was just. No, I can, I can absolutely. Thanks. Sure. And she, again, I think it's on May 28th, she'll be back to give an additional update. So um, we'll be revisiting as well. Thanks. Sure. I just have one, yes. one question. Um, Looking at um, way ahead, mm -hmm. June, for a date for retreat. Yeah. Um, I don't know if, if members of the committee want to look at their calendar now or, or want to have some time to look at mm -hmm. it to see what, what are good dates. But um, I think it's, it's um, not, I don't want to say it's essential, but I think it would be an excellent idea to, to have a retreat. Um, I think the last one we had worked very, very well yeah. uh, on a number of different levels and a number yeah, of different yeah, ways. Yeah. In, in, I, I, would, I would certainly look forward to doing it again. Um, we're going to have um, some new members, possibly, um, and so um, I think it would be good as, a, if nothing else, just a bonding experience and kind of bringing people up to speed as to where we are and how we operate. But I don't know if, if we should set on that now or talk about it over the next month or so. Or you know, I think people, we could probably come up, come with some potential options okay. and yeah. people okay. can, I think that would be helpful. Fine. That's fine. Right. Yeah. Good. Okay. Any other questions, comments about calendars? 
If not, I will entertain a motion to go into executive session. The purpose of uh, discuss, discussing strategy with respect to collective bargaining is authorized by Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21, paragraph, uh, excuse me, parentheses, three, close parentheses. Can I have a motion? Rob. I move to enter executive session for the reasons stated by the chair not to return to general session. Second. Second. Um, Fonch, aye. 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 Good aye. Shabazz, aye. Baptiste, aye. <laughs> O'Brien, aye. Spence, aye. Take care, aye. Thank you very much. We are adjourned into executive yeah. session. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you audience. Much. Thank you. Now, and people coming, three representatives from each community coming together with the interests of their um, communities, but with children in the for forefront and have waded through really hard discussions. And to be able to watch that committee do their work was really impressive. Um, and it's one of the most collaborative groups I've ever seen, quite honestly, and functional teams. Um, and Saturday was, it was a marathon of four hours, but people were in it, they were committed, they were considering all of our kids, our community's kids, and how best to move forward. So I just want to say thank you because it, was, it has not been easy and it's not done yet, but um, just the people were so explicitly there for, for children is, was um, impressive. So I thank them and everyone. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Um, moving on then, we're, we're coming to, um, to closure here, well ahead of our <laughs> time clock. Um, I'm gonna ask Maria to give us an update on both the calendar, future items, uh, and again, let me repeat that at, at some point between now or the next meeting and the first meeting in April, uh, I'm going to ask, um, request that Maria put on the proposal. So that's in addition to whatever Maria shares with us at this point. Sure. So thank you. So for our next meeting, um, and I don't have my calendar in front of me, but our next meeting, Dr. Cohen will come with her team to talk about, oh, thank you. Uh, an update on teaching and learning, and I believe she'll be focusing um, very solidly on math and science uh, pre-K-12. Um, and that, I think, presentation and question and answer will be about an hour, so that is going to be the bulk of our meeting. We also will vote for um, choice, and we also will vo vote a calendar. Um, let me think, where are we after that? Let's see. Oh, and then we have to move topics now. So we have to move some operational topics of information systems and maintenance and operation report. Um, so we will have to consider what the next team meeting would be, which I think is probably um, April 30th, I think is the next joint meeting. April 30th, I know the PBIS update is Oh, okay. That oh, that's night. great. That's right. PBIS and discipline, that, that update. And I have to, I should have said that already too. We've had... We had our whole team presenting today, this afternoon at the Mary Lyons um, conference on PBIS, and it was stellar. It was a model that could be taken on the road. Can I say that? Um, and I also understand um, Dave Sloven, Lieutenant O'Connor, um, Paul Lyons, and another colleague um, presented also at the Mary Lyons conference around school safety, um, risk assessment, safety assessments, um, and, and really impressive. So I just put that out there too but I, so all that to say is PBIS is coming up um, in April so the next meeting I have to play around with for a little bit but our immediate meeting will be Dr. Cohen and um, the two votes. Can I ask a question about um, the, we talked she's going to talk about math Dr. Cohen? Mm -hmm. um, will, will there be discussions about or question or explaining about the different pathways that math has in the high school because yes. I know that's a question that's come up here a lot. And, Yes. Just an explanation of how it works and students' choices. So. And where we are in our process because her work has really been to look at math pre-K-12, um, not only um, curriculum <coughs> materials but pathways, sequence, um, you know, the whole package. Okay. So she'll be bringing us lots of detailed information and an update and then um, again in May for lots of decision making. So. Can I have one more question? Is there any, like, will we be able to see any of that before so we can read it, or is that sure. something? I don't want to put a lot of pressure on her, but yeah. just to understand a little bit more about I that. Can, I can ask her what she'd be able to send in advance. It's not a report format, but right. it would be a PowerPoint presentation, and I know that she will be also having teachers 
um, and administrators come and present with her, so it's going to be pretty comprehensive. Yeah. But I can ask okay. her to see what she can send in advance happily. I think she's, I know she's working on it because I saw the power, part of the PowerPoint today. So. It's just so much when, when they share it that it's night, there's so much, and then you give the questions, and you know, sure. so I could ask the questions later again, but I was just. No, I, I can absolutely. Thanks. Sure. And she, again, I think it's on May 28th, she'll be back to give an additional update, so um, we'll be revisiting as well. Thanks. Sure. I just have one, yes. one question. Um, Looking at um, way ahead, mm -hmm. June, for a date for retreat. Yeah. Um, I don't know if, if members of the committee want to look at their calendar now or, or want to have some time to look at mm -hmm. it to see what, what are good dates. But um, I think it's, it's um, not, I don't want to say it's essential, but I think it would be an excellent idea to, to have a retreat. Um, I think the last one we had worked very, very well yeah. uh, on a number of different levels in a yeah, number of different ways. In, in, I, I, would, I would certainly look forward to doing it again. Um, we're going to have um, some new members, possibly, um, and so um, I think it would be good as, a, if nothing else, just a bonding experience and kind of bringing people up to speed as to where we are and how we operate. But I don't know if, if we should set on that now or talk about it over the next month or so. Or you know, I think people, we could probably come up, come with some potential options okay. and yeah. people okay. can, I think that would be helpful. That's fine. Yeah. Good. Okay. Any other questions, comments about calendar? If not, I will entertain a motion to go into executive session. Oh. The purpose of uh, discuss, discussing strategy with respect to collective bargaining is authorized by Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21, paragraph, uh, excuse me, parentheses 3, close parentheses. Can I have a motion? Rob. I move to enter executive session for the reasons stated by the chair not to return to general session. Second. Second. Um, Fonch, aye. Oppie, aye. Foley, aye. Hood, aye. Shabazz, aye. Baptiste, aye. <laughs> O'Brien, aye. Spence, aye. Take care, aye. Thank you very much. We are adjourned into executive session. Thank you, folks. Thank, Thank you, you audience. Much.